If this is your first time playing Wrath of the Lich King, we want you to stop right now before you make a huge mistake. You see, Wrath isn't like Shadowlands. Classes aren't nearly as face roll, and you can't just log in and expect to automatically win every game. The biggest mistake players make when playing Classic for the first time is choosing a new class, only to be crushed by its high skill cap. So today, we will help you avoid this blunder by showing you which classes are easy to pick up for the first time and which ones are meant for the most hardcore players. Even if you disagree with some of our opinions, your choice of main is guaranteed to have a direct impact on how easy or hard your time climbing the ladder will be. Just like how the choice to use skillcap.com slash wow can make your rating gains easy thanks to our 400 rating guarantee. That's right, we're so confident in our promise that you'll get a full refund if you don't see results within six months. How are we so confident, you might ask? Well, it's simply because we've spent the last few months working with the most hardcore players who have tens of thousands of hours playing Wrath of the Lich King to get you ahead of the competition the moment Wrath launches. With guides that show you how to deal the highest damage, along with arena commentaries from literally the best Wrath players in the world, you'll have everything you need to dominate even your hardest matchups. Best of all, one subscription gets you access to Wrath Classic, Shadowlands, and eventually Dragonflight. So with nothing to lose and everything to gain, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today with a special discount link in the description below. Alright, back to the video. First things first, let's go over some criteria on what it means to be easy. Generally speaking, it means having a low skill floor, which is different than a skill cap or skill ceiling. So what's the difference? A spec having a low skill floor means it's easy to pick up. Even without technical mastery or nuanced game knowledge, you can still do fairly well, which obviously takes into consideration how strong the spec is at its core. If a spec is easy to pick up but is absolute trash, well, that means an increased level of difficulty. Finally, when thinking about the difficulty of each spec, it's important to consider the strength of its abilities. Does every ability have high impact? Does the spec have mechanics that are forgiving? Is it expected to multitask, or can it get away with doing a single thing? These are all important questions to consider. But enough of that, let's dive in. We will start with the easiest melee in no particular order. Here you will find enhancement shamans. Now you might be asking, how can a hybrid be easy? Doesn't it have a lot to do? While mechanics like Grounding Totem and Wind Shear are important, their low CD makes them pretty difficult to mess up repeatedly. Combine that with the fact that Enhance is designed for short, bursty, front-loaded games in comps like Beast Cleave, and it becomes more of a one-trick than anything else. The same is true for Frost DK. Most of their utility comes in the form of Hungering Cold, doing small one-minute setups while trying to keep momentum or kite away in between. Again, this is definitely a unitasking role for any melee, and when you combine this short instant cast AoE CC with a relatively streamlined damage rotation, Frost DKs are quite easy, despite being weaker than their unholy counterparts. Finally, for easy melee, we have both Prot Warriors and Prot Paladins. Yes, you are fairly likely to encounter both of these, but probably not until later seasons. So what makes them easy? Well, for one, they are both really durable into physical damage while having straightforward utility spells. Prot Warriors in particular can just stay in defensive stance, having access to intervene, interrupts, and stuns the entire time without needing to stand stance too often, which makes resource management much simpler. Prot Paladins, on the other hand, might have a slightly more involved utility role thanks to having a magic dispel, but outside of this, it's more or less the same story. They do well into melee, but might struggle into casters, all while having a relatively easy damage rotation and very little resource management. And with our easy melee out of the way, let's look at the moderately difficult spread of melee DPS. First up, we have Unholy DK, which prompts an obvious question. How could Frost be easy while Unholy be more difficult? Of course, they have an insanely strong CD with Summon Gargoyle. No doubt about it, this is one of the best offensive cooldowns in the entire game, but keeping up pressure outside of Gargoyle is one thing that sets good and bad DKs apart. They also have slightly more in terms of team-wide utility, with Anti-Magic Zone being Unholy exclusive. Without Immortal Strike Effect and with actual pet management, Unholy is tangibly more difficult than its Frost counterpart. Next up, we have Ret Paladins. Just like Protection, the majority of their difficulty is tied to utility, but unlike Prot, they are squishier overall. One of the biggest adjustments when playing Paladin in general is getting the most value out of Revenging Wrath, which unlike later expansions can actually be dispelled or spell stolen in PvP. Ret also has a slightly more involved role to play compared to Protection, as it has Repentance on top of Hammer of Justice. And once again, with the defensive dispel, Ret Paladin takes on some additional responsibilities and will need to act monitor debuffs on their team. Finally, we have Arms Warrior. Just like Rep Paladin, Arms has a bit of nuance which makes it more difficult than
than its protection counterpart. The biggest difference is stance dancing. Unlike Prout Warriors, who can do most of their rotation and utility in the same stance, ARMS needs to utilize all three stances quite regularly, whether it be swapping to D stance for intervene or disarm, or going into Berserker for intercept and pummel. Now, of course, a lot of these abilities can be macroed, but there is still a rage penalty for swapping stances, meaning that resource management is a bit more complicated for ARMS warriors. And finally, ARMS has a very unique form of maintenance thanks to Unrelenting Assault, which activates as a healing reduction or spell damage reduction debuff on enemy targets only when overpower is used during spell casts. This essentially means ARMS warriors will have to do more than just interrupt casts, but carefully time damage globals into them as well. That brings us to the hardest melee to play in Wrath, which includes a class that may surprise you if you're coming from retail. It's Rogue. Look, we could have split each Rogue spec into their own sections, but the class as a whole suffers from one huge problem, that it is relentlessly unforgiving. For one, they are one of the squishiest classes in the game, which means taking extra care as to how and when defensive cooldowns are used, especially Vanish, which will break on damage immediately, unlike more modern expansion. Their resource system is much different than it is in Retail WoW, with positional requirements and combo points being locked to a single target, combined with the need to properly manage energy to avoid dead globals. And adding to their complexity is the fact that there is no glyph of blind, which means that blind won't remove dots when applied, making it more difficult to use in team play. Out of all three specs, sub is probably the most forgiving defensively thanks to preparation and access to shadow step, but once again, the class as a whole is pretty brutal if you're coming from Shadowlands Rogue experience. Finally, we have the last melee on our list, Feral Druid. Pretty much everything we mentioned with Rogue also applies to Feral. Just like Rogue, combo points are tied to a single target with energy and positioning needing to be managed to avoid dead globals. This time, however, there's another resource to manage, Mana, which Feral Druids actually need to spend with their predatory swiftness procs and to shift out of slows. With melee out of the way, it's time to look at ranged, starting with what might be the easiest spec for Season 5. Beast Mastery Hunters take this first spot. There are a few things that are certain in life, death, taxes, and BM being insanely easy. We predict that it might be one of the strongest ranged specs in Season 5, as players will have significantly less health and resilience, making BM Hunter damage incredibly overtuned. Unlike its sister specs, BM is fairly one-trick. It isn't really designed for setups since it lacks Scattershot and Wyvern Sting and instead is more budgeted to press the W key while slamming Bestial Wrath, Rapid Fire, and Aimed Shot into kill targets, all while having some CC immunity thanks to the Beast Within. Combined, BM is just well suited for easy play. You aren't really required to think hard about your decisions since your entire toolkit is designed to live fast and die young. Following Hunter, we have one of the biggest meta giants for Wrath PvP, and that is Destro Warlock. Remember earlier when we said that being easy can be as simple as all your spells having high impact? Well, that's Destro. Obviously, its bread and butter is Chaos Bolt, which does enormous damage with a relatively short cast time given appropriate haste values, and unlike Affliction, Destro has a much easier time setting up damage thanks to Shadow Fury, which is instant in Wrath of the Lich King. Aside from its well-budgeted offensive toolkit, Destro Warlock defense is nothing short of amazing into other casters, thanks to Nether Protection combined with Soul Link. Overall, you can't really go wrong playing one of the most destructive wizards of any expansion. With such an over-budgeted offensive toolkit, doing damage and landing kills is relatively straightforward, making Destro an excellent meta pick for an easy arena experience. And rounding out easy ranged is another meta titan, Elemental Shaman. In many ways, the same strength of Destro can also apply to Ellie. It doesn't matter what button you press in your action bar, it is bound to do something useful. One of the best strengths of Elemental is that it has multiple damage spell schools, with Lava Burst being its most threatening spell, which even has some talented dispel protection and is lockout independent of its off heals and utility. Ellie Shamans also come equipped with some passive bulkiness thanks to Astral Shift, and have an incredibly efficient kiting or peeling tool with an instant earthbind root. Honestly, there's a lot to talk about with Elemental shaman but the biggest takeaway is that they really aren't bad at anything of course with such an expansive toolkit ellie might have a relatively high skill cap but if you're looking to pick up something that is guaranteed to do well elemental shaman is for you this brings us to our moderately difficult range DPS, which is shared by two hybrids. The first is Balanced Druid. Let's establish one thing, that Boomkins kinda suck. The spec is more or less a true one-trick, having decent pressure during Starfall and Treants, and then falling off faster than Blizzard's nerfs to Affliction Warlocks in Shadowlands Season 3. It's this quick burnout that gives Balanced Druids a slot in moderate difficulty. If they didn't run out of steam so fast, they might actually be a bit more complicated. 
Outside of that though, they are fairly easy to pick up. Doing damage with your CDs is relatively autopilot, but the sheer weakness of the spec is what harshly limits it from being a truly easy experience. Finally, we have Shadow Priest. Shadow is actually quite interesting because it has all the makings of a high tier wizard, but encounters a few difficulties early into the expansion. One of those difficulties is mana. Shadow Priests, like some other casters, won't truly flourish until Solace of the Fallen is available later on. Without this trinket, the biggest difficulty Shadow will have is managing mana. Overall though, Shadow Priest functions very similar to Ret Paladin and needs to pay close attention to magic debuffs on their team since they come with the ability to defensively dispel, adding some complexity to arena gameplay. Aside from that, however, they are a relatively straightforward caster with some unique control options, making them perfect for someone who wants a bit of a challenge in Wrath PvP. And speaking of challenges, we've arrived at the ultra hard level for ranged DPS. First up, we have Marks and Survival Hunters. Now, you might be wondering, how can BM be easy while these other two specs be that much harder? Well, as we mentioned, BM is designed to do one thing. It is literally just a press W and win or lose type spec without much nuance. On the other hand, Marks and Survival focus more on control, setting up kills with Scattershot, Freezing Arrow, and Wyvern Sting. And with this, Marks gains an additional difficulty curve since it is the only spec with an interrupt. But perhaps the biggest difficulty when playing any Hunter spec is that they simply die. Some might even argue that they are the squishiest ranged class in the game, with only a clunky deterrence as their primary personal defensive, into which rogues can conveniently cheap shot and warriors can spam over power. Take all of this combined and the Hunter class as a whole is a true glass cannon, and if you are up to the challenge then Marks or Survival might be for you. Nearing the end of ranged DPS, we have Affliction Warlock. Now, you also might be wondering how Destro would be easy and Affliction so much harder. Well, let's break it down. For one, the spec requires a bit more pet control. Destro Warlocks can get away with playing a Succubus who can literally turn invisible and autocast CC. But Affliction is played with a Fell Hunter almost exclusively since they need to dot multiple targets to open up kill windows. Fell Hunters are not easy pets to properly manage. Of course, they have an interrupt, but the true skill is managing their defensive dispel. Yes, that's right, Fell Hunters can dispel magic debuffs off friendly targets. This makes them a huge asset for their team, all the while making pet management significantly more important since Affliction Warlocks are essentially half of a player without a pet. And finally, what might be the hardest class in the entire game, Mage. If you have been a retail only player for the past few expansions, you might be ready in the comments to absolutely roast us for telling you Mage is hard, but hear us out. Much of the easiness of the modern Mage meta is the fact that they became tanks from Mists of Pandaria onwards. In Wrath, they are not very tanky at all, with limited shields, barely any passive damage mitigation, and a single defensive cooldown. This means you can't just run on top of the enemy team for CC, you have to be much more tactical. This includes making sure you use blink properly. If you blink at the wrong time or in the wrong direction, that usually means you'll be stuck there for a while with players training you. Not to mention that mages are one of the few classes with multiple DR categories, having polymorph, roots, and of course a stun. When this is all coupled by a very limited mana bar, mages have a lot to deal with and are generally considered the hardest class in Wrath of the Lich King. Finally, it's time to go over healers, starting with the easiest. This first slot belongs to Holy Paladin. First of all, they are widely considered the best healer in Wrath of the Lich King, which intrinsically makes them easier. There were multiple quality of life improvements to Holy Paladin between Wrath and TBC, most notably more instant healing. Paladins are also the healer most reflective of modern day expansions, as one of the few healing classes with multiple defensive CDs. You guessed it, this means Paladins are able to rotate cooldowns, which practically no other healer is capable of. Outside of this though, they just have some insane passives, whether it be something as simple as spell resistance or autoplay mechanics like Sacred Cleansing. Trailing slightly behind are Discipline Priests. Now, you might be thinking, wait a second skill cap, priests have shadow word death. That is a skill ability, right? Maybe in 2009, but not today when every player treats every single arena game like their life depends on it. Priests are somewhat susceptible to getting trained, but since they usually play RMP, they automatically have some healing tools at their disposal. But as a saving grace, their healing is quite easy to do, with Penance arguably being the strongest healing spell in the game. Now let's move on to the only moderately difficult healer, which belongs to Resto Druid. As one of the only healers with actual mobility, Druids can avoid much of the problems that other healers encounter, especially when it comes to getting trained and avoiding CC. 
the druid healing rotation is actually quite easy, and for the most part, they can rely almost exclusively on instant cast hots to carry HPS. But the true difficulty in druid is tied into cyclone, which is arguably one of the most complex spells to master. Unlike more recent expansions, Resto Druid and Wrath needs to be a bit more involved with their team and needs to actively do things on offense, especially Cyclone. So with an easy healing rotation combined with complex offensive and defensive play, Resto Druids make a great class for someone who appreciates being both challenged and powerful at the same time. And finally, we've arrived at the hardest healer, Resto Shaman. Again though, like other classes on this list, that is mostly due to the fact that they kinda suck. You might be suggesting we are wrong because shamans bring bloodlust and that means they must be really good. Well, that's really the only time they are good. If bloodlust fades or is dispelled, or even worse, spell stolen, Resto Shamans instantly become bad. This is mostly due to the fact that their healing is just way weaker than other healers, causing them to quickly fall behind under pressure. And with that, we wanna know how you did. Were your opinions in in line with ours? Let us know what you think is the most difficult class in Wrath in the comments below. But before we go, you really don't want to miss this opportunity to get a massive head start in the competition with our 400 rating game guarantee. Our courses and arena commentaries have everything you need to help you reach your goals. Regardless of how easy or hard your class is to play, we've got you covered. So head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today to start your journey to Gladiator. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one, and once again hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all Wrath of the Lich King and Dragonflight news. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.